Hi, today we're doing the job of changing a CV rubber boot. This one here, so you can probably just about see that there's a nasty split in it. Obviously the grease is coming out and this is on the front wheel drive car, an MG ZS. So the job is probably um, similar for a lot of different cars that are front wheel drive. Uh, of course the problem is, in order to change the rubber boot, Got to disconnect the drive shaft from the hub and so on. Now, there's two sorts of boots apparently. They can get to replace them the originals and these more uh, stretchy ones, which we got from the local motor factors. So, in the kit, you'll have some new clips, some new, probably graphite grease, and this is the rubber boot, the CV boot. So it looks very similar to the original, but apparently the rubber is a bit more stretchy. So first obviously remove the wheel, jack up the car, put it on axle stands for extra security. Don't just rely on the jack to hold the car. Sometimes they do fail. Now we've got to undo the hub uh, nut, which is locked into place in this case by this compressible piece of metal on the end that's tapped into a slot in the drive shaft end. So we have to get a screwdriver and a hammer, push that back out and undo the nut, first job. So in order to get that uh, compressed tab or uh, end of the nut up, you might have to get a screwdriver that sort of size, bridge it in the slot and lever it up a little bit. It'll be quite a strong screwdriver, just so you can uh, raise the lip of the nut enough to get a screwdriver end on this so you can start bashing with it so then at that sort of angle sorry about the sun we could start tapping on our screwdriver just to try and push out that piece of metal Probably. once it's raised up enough you could try undoing the bolt Let's see if it will loosen up so in order to work out which way the nut um, undoes, uh, check which direction the thread is, because sometimes they're reverse threaded. Uh, in this case you could look at where you can just about see the thread on the end of the nut. And I think it just about appears such that my finger moves around clockwise, the thread actually gets deeper, which is the traditional direction for a nut and bolt, and in which case we have to do it well, we have to undo the nut anti-clockwise, so we'll try that. So of course the nut is done up fairly tight, and if you're just going to try and turn it, that would rotate the other wheel. So we have to lower the car down so that the other wheel touches the ground, and I put the engine in uh, first gear. Then the resistance of the engine is enough, such that we can uh, get enough resistance to undo the nut, like so another possible technique is to wedge some bar between the studs like so onto the ground or if you find it easier put the wheel back on remove the center cap so you can still get a bar and the socket through to the nut and lower the whole car to the ground with the wheel on the ground and that gives you a lot more leverage in order to undo this nut same applies when doing it later of course and when you do do it up, uh, they say it's best to have a new one of these uh, nuts. Unless that is probably, unless that comes to a different position, you use a fresh bit of metal, but my recommendation would be to get a new one of those. Or another way is to get an assistant to press on the brakes, to uh, lock the disc, of course, and lock the hub so you can undo the nuts. And next we've got to remove this split pin and the nut from the lower suspension arm and we need a ball joint separator to separate the hub from the lower arm so then we separated the ball joint using the ball joint separator tool uh, that's one sort and this this one is this one is another sort. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of space 
to actually get those tools uh, in there between the rubber boot and the steering arm and actually a little easier way of doing it, a little tip uh, this quite blunt piece of metal in between the metal of the hub and the metal of the arm without getting near to damaging the rubber boot and whack that a couple of times with a hammer leave it a little bit and then that was enough to actually separate the wall joint and as you can see that now moves and let's see if we can now lift the hub away from the lower suspension arm now in one of the workshop manuals i've got it says to also disconnect the uh, wishbone connecting to the damper and spring which we may need to do let's see how far we can get without doing that which saves a bit of time and indeed we can then lift off the hub and try and lift out the drive shaft from the hub it comes out like like so so what would be ideal is to rope that out of the way and we'll do that and what you don't want to do is have the drive shaft pull out from the end of the gearbox because in the gearbox oil it'll come out so let's rope that hub out of the way first and there we go with a bit of rope managed to clip it onto the top of the shock absorber it's quite heavy but that then so that then gives us enough room to get around and deal with the end of the drive shaft and the cv boot hopefully we can do it in that position and for extra security we've got another rope attached to another bit of the car so let's get the old clip and the rubber boot off uh, these clips can probably be leave it apart with a screwdriver there we go i think that's that one off so for this one i'll get some big cutters cut through the metal like so and in fact we'll get the old cv boot off as well by cutting through it let's just let's just leave that out of the way a little bit first and then start cutting away oh it's getting slippery so a good scalpel knife or a standing blade would also be equally good here so I haven't got the old boot off and then faced with the job of getting the new boot on so uh, as I said at the start these ones are the sort of stretchy variety so they do indeed stretch rather a lot uh, even so it's going to be a bit of a job to get that over the actual CV joint so a couple of choices here uh, you could pull the shaft out of the gearbox but then you have to change the gearbox oil um, but apparently the joint as I've already done but I'm going to show you how I actually did it the CV joint is held in place here you can see I've already taken it off but it's held in place by a little circlip I don't know if you can see that but at the end there where I'm pointing it's a little circlip that goes around the end of the shaft and that just uh, holds it in place somewhat and the way to remove it uh, which you can even do in situ which is what I've just done is to hold the shaft in position by some uh, gripping spanners, adjustable spanners here metal grips or whatever they're called I've got one each side of the suspension fork and then I tapped on the end this outer piece of metal with a hammer they say to use a uh, soft end in a hammer uh, but I'll leave that up to you uh, and with a few I would say sharp wax it then got past the circlip and here's the CV joint not much damage done a little bit of dent in one side maybe and having cleaned it up then we can easily get on our new boot with very little stretching involved and we're going to pack that with grease in a minute but first 
we'll try and get the drive shaft back on the CV joint because the critical thing here is to get this uh, circlip little spring wire thing compressed enough. Now they do say in the manual to discard the old one and put a new one on. Uh, leave that to you, that would be my recommendation. I uh, can't see too much wrong with this old one so personally I'm going to reuse it. Um, so I'd imagine we're going to have to maybe try and push on the circlip a little bit and give the drive shaft a good push as well. So this time what we'll do I think is move our mould grips, our adjustable spanners uh, to this side of the suspension arms to give it a little bit of support so it's not bashing the gearbox end too much. Yeah, so what we need to do is push that circle into place while pushing in with a CV joint just so that it goes into its slot and then we'll give a little bit of a knock not too hard to damage it and there we can see that is indeed sliding into place until it reaches the end collar like so so next we bring our new rubber boots into its position near enough and we need to pack it with grease so the rubber boot comes with a pack of grease like so graphite grease so squeeze that all out into the rubber boot That's then going to get distributed round as the car is moving. And if you like, you can push some into the CV joint as well. Easy to get very messy at this point. Let's just push a little bit into the CV joint. And then we'll pop the boot over the top. Stop it getting uncontrollably messy, like so, and then we've got to put the clips on. Okay, there's our rubber boot back into place. That's the outer clip in position, so they just hook on the end, and then this raised part needs squeezing. So there was apparently a special tool that I never bothered buying. Uh, you could use a jubilee clip i suppose but it might throw out the balance but what i'm going to try and do using this clip is just use some pliers to squeeze the end down to it carefully if that is indeed possible let's try these ones again well, so what you don't want to do is actually cut through the band which is the danger of using cutters <clears throat> all right I think that is tight enough seems to be squeezed enough feels nice and tight so that will do for that one and we'll do a similar job on the other end so that's the new CV joint and the clips in place and uh, reassembly is obviously a reversal of disassembly. So the Torx, this nut on the bottom, you uh, tighten to 36 pound foot and then align it to the next hole for putting the split pin into place. And the hub nut, so similarly to how you took the nut off, um, but tighten this to 133 pound foot and then knock the metal into the slot don't forget to stop it from ever undoing and that's it that's how to reasonably easy easily change your cv rubber boot on the drive shaft uh, this happens to be an mg zs 1.8 but um, it's probably a similar job on a lot of cars especially all the rovers and all of the hondas around this sort of year which is uh, this car is 2001 Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck with yours. Thanks, bye. Oh, by the way, I'll try and put some links into the video description for any useful things to buy for doing this job. Um, even nitrile rubber gloves, which are pretty essential because it's uh, 
a very messy job that gets grease everywhere. Okay, thanks for watching again, and cheers, bye.